Inside of this pot, my friends, is a very interesting stove, a tri-fuel stove. It will run on alcohol, solid fuel, and even biomass. The entire stove is made from titanium, and it is ultra light. This is the ever new Titanium DX stove set. And as you can see here, the form factor is rather small. At the same time, as I mentioned before, this is ultra light. This weighs about three ounces. The odds are you've heard of this company before. They're very popular within the ultra light titanium space. They make pots, stoves, cook sets, and so on. Evernew is a Japanese company that's been around since 1920. Here in the United States, they're fairly popular. Of course, in Japan, they're very popular as they are considered a leader in the ultra light space. Let's start with what you receive if you purchase this set. So of course you get the box. On the inside, you have a small instruction manual. There is no store bag, nothing like that. You also get the stove. This is what the company refers to as the turbo plate. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. This is the pot support base. It also acts as a windscreen. You have all of the oxygen holes around here. Flames will erupt from these, hitting your pot. This is a feeding port and also a lighting port. On the inside, you can see these little legs here, and that's for this turbo plate. If you want to use this stove with solid fuel, you would put the solid fuel on top of that and go from there. This is the base plate. On the inside, we have an alcohol stove. It looks like a Trangia alcohol stove, but in fact, it is somewhat different. On the inside of this alcohol stove, you have measurements for up to two ounces of fuel. A snuffer is not included, a damper is not included, what you receive here is just the alcohol stove and that's it. With the base plate here, you have the supports down at the bottom, an additional feeding hole and lighting port. Let's say if you wanna use this as a biomass stove, this would be on the bottom, this would be on the top, you can light from here and so on. So let's go ahead and set this up for an alcohol stove situation. With this sort of setup, this is what you're looking at. You have the lighting port, you have the alcohol stove on the inside, oxygen holes, and so on. Then comes the turbo plate. I love that name, that's so funny. You take this, you put it on the inside, and it sits on top of those supports, just like this. Now, if you're going to use this as an alcohol stove, you can put in the turbo plate or you can take it out. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. I'll tell you what, everyone, let's take a second here and let's fire up this alcohol stove. Then we'll go over some stats and ultimately the review. Let's start here by taking off the top portion and let's fill up the alcohol stove with two ounces of fuel. You can see this large port here. This allows you to ignite the alcohol stove with a match or a long lighter. Igniting the stove is fairly easy. In cooler conditions, you'll have to take your match or your flame and put it directly right into the alcohol. When it's warmer, it will ignite a little bit easier. Today, the temperature is around 40 degrees, so I just took the match, let it drop right into the stove itself. It will cause no damage, no harm to it. With this stove burning now, because it's alcohol, it is difficult to see the flame. So what I'm going to do is this. Later on tonight when I get home, I will fire this stove up and film it in darker conditions so you all can see the flame output. I went ahead, started a timer. That way I could show you all how fast this boils two cups of water in real world conditions. There we go. While you all can't see it, there is a large amount of flame coming off of this stove. When the pot was on there, the flames were erupting from the sides and going up the sides of the pot. That's something that you have to take note of. It's interesting, you all with this lighting likely didn't see any flames at all, but that's simply not the case. Flames were coming out of every single one of these holes, just erupting, going up four or five inches up the side of this pot. As far as the boil time, four minutes, 30 seconds, real world conditions. Again, the temperature outside is around 40 degrees. The water was chilly and there's a slight breeze in the air. Because of the simplistic nature of the alcohol stove, there's no way to snuff out the flame and there's no way to control the output. It's all or nothing with this stove. 
Because you can't snuff out the flame, that means any bit of alcohol that's in the stove itself, it has to be burned, it has to evaporate. There's no way that you're going to save the leftover fuel for later. Now everyone, I'm going to show you all this stove in action in a darker environment so you all can see the heat output. You can see how glowing hot this stove becomes. As I do so, I'm going to go over some stats. As I mentioned before, the weight of this stove is three ounces, and that includes the entire kit. The dimensions of this, 3.4 inches by 2.8 inches by 3.3 inches, and it's about seven inches tall. The the capacity of the alcohol stove is 2.3 ounces. And it needs to be mentioned that there's two versions of this kit here. There's one kit that includes the alcohol stove, and there's another kit that doesn't. The kit that doesn't include the alcohol stove is about $8 less expensive. Talking about price, at the time of filming, $55 on Amazon. With the stove burning away here, there's a few things to point out. One, it did not take any time at all for the stove to prime. Once you have it ignited, it gets going very quickly. Two, look at the flames jutting out from those air holes on the side. Look at how high those flames go. Three, pay close attention to the titanium metal. Look at how glowing hot it is. With my testing here at Lone Wolf Mountain, four minutes, 30 seconds, two cups of water, two ounces of fuel. In a controlled environment at home inside of my house, the results are exactly the same. Let's talk about this turbo plate here for a second. I call this a spreader plate. The company calls it a turbo plate. As far as using the alcohol stove, this does absolutely nothing. I've done numerous tests with the turbo plate and without it, and it makes no difference at all. It makes no difference as far as the runtime. It makes no difference as far as the boil time. The difference is with my testing when using this and not using it, we're within the margin of error. Less than five seconds difference for each test. By the way, everyone, I am using denatured alcohol to run in this stove. Now let's go ahead and begin my review of this denatured DX set. So to start off with the pros, this is very lightweight. The entire kit, three ounces, that's not bad. Also folks, it is very compact when it's all put together. Next my friends, the price for this is not bad at all. $55 for this alcohol stove, super, super lightweight. It's more than fair. Next up, when it comes to the alcohol stove itself, the capacity is good, it's fairly efficient for being an alcohol stove. You have to keep in mind, everyone, that alcohol is not an efficient fuel by any means. In fact, folks, I do have an episode that focuses on alcohol stoves. It goes over the pros and cons and things that you need to consider before taking one of these stoves out on a trip. So with that being said, if you're interested in more information about an alcohol stove, check out that very popular episode. Talking about using this as an alcohol stove, this entire system here works incredibly well for funneling the heat straight up. It comes out of these holes, it goes around your pot, and there's very little heat loss, and that's not the case with all alcohol stoves. Next, when it comes to the titanium, it cools very quickly. In fact, within one minute, you can easily pick this up, dismantle it, and move on. Next up, when it comes to igniting the alcohol stove, it's very easy because you have this large port right here. Another pro that I have for this stove is the wind guard here. This does a fairly good job of offering protection for your stove. My friends, if you're enjoying this episode, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It does help this channel quite a bit. It helps with the algorithm and so on. I do appreciate it. Those are the pros that I have for the DX stove. Now it's time to move over to the cons. And I'm, I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Luke, you've skipped over some things, right? This burns solid fuel. This can act as a wood stove. I haven't forgotten those points. Those are actually negatives when it comes to this stove. Let's focus on using this stove with solid fuel. Carrying all of this to use solid fuel makes no sense at all. I would look at burning solid fuel in the stove as a backup. You have the plate, you could put the solid fuel on here, but when it comes to solid fuel, you don't even have to carry a stove if you don't want to. If you want to, there's much lighter, much smaller stoves out on the market. I would not carry this and put this together to burn solid fuel. I would go with a lighter weight, smaller option, or make some pot supports out of rocks, put the fuel down, and go from there. For $55, this is way too expensive for a solid fuel stove. Next, when it comes to using this as a biomass stove, in other words, burning wood, sticks, and so on, to do that, you take out the alcohol stove, you take the turbo plate. <laughs> turbo plate, I love that. That sure sounds like some marketing gimmick, don't it? You take the base plate and you put the turbo plate in the bottom, put the top on. This stove is now ready to use as a biomass stove. The thing is this, everyone. The size of this alone makes this a very poor wood stove. In an emergency, you could get it to work. But folks, it's gonna take a ton of work, a ton of small sticks. You're not going to feed large sticks inside of this. In the end, this is not a wood stove. I would never use this for that purpose. And that takes me over to the biggest con that I have with this stove. A lot of this is just pure gimmick. Using this as a solid fuel stove, gimmick. Using this as a wood stove, 
gimmick. The turbo plate, gimmick. Is this an alcohol stove? Yes, it is. Does it work well for that purpose? Yes, it does. But for anything else, this makes no sense at all. When it comes to the cons that I have for this stove, my list is long, so let's continue. This will not be the best stove for a rocky environment where the ground is uneven. Any sort of deviation on the ground is going to be seen up top, and that's going to influence your cooking ability on here. Since there's no pot support specifically, it is kind of slick, so you just have to be careful. This isn't the type of stove that you would want to run at an angle because the top is so slick. When you're using this as an alcohol stove, you have the flames jutting out from these holes here. These flames are going up the side of your pot. The handles that you have on your pot are going to be exposed to those flames, to the heat, and they're going to become very, very hot. So if you have any sort of heat dampener on your handle, you have to be careful because this can catch it on fire and melt it. To lift a pot or pan off of this stove, you're going to need some sort of mitt, some sort of bale handle, maybe a washcloth like I've used. You're going to need something. Next, my friends. Take a look here at the turbo plate. There has been a substantial amount of warping. Is it a big deal? No, it's not, but it does take place. When you fill the stove up with two ounces of fuel, it will run for roughly nine minutes. It will warp this turbo plate. You have to remember two things, folks. This kit was designed to be ultra lightweight, and also it's made from titanium, which is very soft. So some warping is going to happen with this setup. If you were going to use this as a wood stove, substantial warping would take place with long duration burns. Talk about the titanium being soft, because it's so soft, you will have to put this in some sort of protective case, or you could do like I did and put it inside of my pot. This is a Toke 750 milliliter pot and it fits inside of this perfectly. There's enough space in there for some matches, a washcloth, and so on. This is definitely not the stove that you want to put loosely inside of your backpack because it could become deformed very easily. With the alcohol stove, I've already mentioned that you can't put out the flames on this very easily and there's no way to store unused fuel inside of this. Next, there's no way to simmer with this stove. As I mentioned before, it's all or nothing. You light it and it goes until it's out, that's it. This is not a good stove for cooking. This is going to be a good stove for simply boiling some water and that's it. I mentioned before that this offers good protection as far as wind goes, and that's true. But in windy conditions, you're going to need more than just this. You're going to need a full wind shield to optimize the performance of this stove. As far as my pros and cons go, that's pretty much it, everyone. To summarize, in the end, for an alcohol-based stove, I like it. It works really well for that purpose in that regards. Everything else is just gimmick in my opinion. The solid fuel, gimmick. Using this tiny thing as a wood stove, gimmick. The turbo plate does absolutely nothing, that's a gimmick. If you're someone who likes using alcohol stoves, the performance of this one is top notch. Again, the way that this harnesses the heat, drives it around that pot, it will boil water extremely fast. It's very impressive. For $55, if you're interested in this type of stove, I say it's worth it but I would not pay a dollar more than that. While researching this product a little bit, I did see where some people claim to have paid over $80 for this setup. For $80, you would have to be out of your mind to buy this. That's just simply too much money for what this is. For $55, that makes sense. Alcohol stoves are a dime a dozen, and in general, they're all fairly lightweight. This one takes it to a new level. It's titanium. Again, it's super efficient with this setup here, as efficient as it can be with this type of fuel. In the end, there's a lot of pros and cons to consider with this stove, and I'm interested in hearing from you. What do you all think? Do you like this stove? Do you think it's worth $55, or is that too much? What do you all think about this turbo plate? This, to me, is really surprising. There's just so much gimmick to this. And again, it does absolutely nothing as far as performance goes. Nothing at all. For this episode, folks, I am done. Make sure to sound off in the comment section down below. Hit the like button before you go. It does help out. Everyone, take care. Be well. Strength and honor. Bye for now.